Yay, we're on. Aloha, everyone. I love you. Thank you so much for joining Wisdom Dialogues. It's such a blessing. I'm coming to you from Hawaiian Paradise Park at my beautiful home on the beautiful big island of Hawaii. Hooray! Speaking of a beautiful home, gosh, it just dawned on me how beautiful my home was the other day, like in a really like holy shit kind of way. I was getting dropped off at the gate, that's why. So I was having a different perspective. I was having a perspective of walking through the gate instead of coming out of my car, opening the gate and closing it again, right? So, I, so I'm just walking through the gate and as soon as I open the gate, I'm like, oh my goodness, it is so beautiful here. Um, I had to take out, take my phone out and take pictures and send them to my mom. My mom's like, is that your new house? And I'm like, well, I've, I've been, I've been chilling here since 2020. And, uh, and she goes, and she goes, oh my God, what happened to it? I'm like, Tony happened to it. The yard is just like, I'll, I'll post some pictures. Um, I'll just post, post some pictures now that you guys all reminded me of it by listening to this. <laughs> I'll, I'll post pictures with my next post on the group. Okay. That's where you'll see pictures. And then you'll know you're in the inner circle. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. So, ah, yes. Right before starting, I mean, right before starting Wisdom Dialogues today, I was having a conversation with my daughter. I just got done with it. And she was telling me how uh, how much stress she's feeling. She's at Disneyland. It's her second day of Disneyland. And she didn't get to go into Disneyland today at all because she just doesn't feel the energy to be able to go to Disneyland. So she's staying at Disneyland Hotel, not going to Disneyland, getting a pedicure. And, you know, she calls me up and she just sounds like she's pretty desperate. Right. So I was at this uh, I was at this event all weekend learning how to do this thing called radical awakening. Right. Um, so I go, well, let's just try doing this stuff over the phone. You know, like, you know, it's it's like she knows what's up. So basically what it is, is you take someone through a series of these steps where, where, you know, I could even tell you guys real fast because you might want to play with it. I don't know. It's pretty simple. You know, basically, first you put your attention to your fist in the back of your head, right? And you just get your, you get the feeling of what it feels like to have your fist behind your head, not on your head, but behind it. Okay. You just feel that it's a, it's a visceral feeling, you know, kind of like what I've been sharing with you guys a bunch, this visceral feeling, right? So, uh, so, so you notice that feeling. And then, and then after you do that, there's seven steps. I'll probably forget a bunch of them, but it doesn't matter. You're still going to get it. It's really fucking simple. So <laughs> then after that, you're getting the sense of, you know, of the, of the space back behind you, like what's, what space is behind you. Uh, and that is, and in that space, that's where uh, you're looking through basically your head it, through your eyes and you know even imagining the head as a empty paper mache you know like what you, you guys ever uh, do pinatas where those things are hollow so think of that as a head and then there, the the back of it's open and then there's an awareness looking through the back of the head and through the eyes okay and then at some point after that then so you feel that right you feel what that feels like and then at some point after that you imagine that you're doing the same thing, but you got a mirror. So now you're looking through the head and you're looking back at yourself, like, you know, letting that paper mache uh, drop, like what's looking, right? Making, letting that paper mache head drop. So you get into that feeling sense, right? And then from that feeling sense, you number one, notice how it feels to be loved, how to feel the infinite love, because you can already feel, you can already sense that there's nothing there, right? You already sense that there's nothing there. And that's kind of a scary thing. So you go to the infinite love, you know, and know the infinite love. And then after that, after that, you notice the thoughts that are arising in your mind and notice that they they're not really coming from anywhere. See, you thought everything was coming from the middle of your head. That's how you've been trained to be, right? 
to think that you're like, you're the one behind the eyes and you're the one perceiving through the eyes. But you get the visceral sense that there's this awareness perceiving everything through the eyes and even looking back at itself. So you see that the thoughts aren't arising from the middle of your head. They're just arising from nowhere. And when, you, when you're looking at your thoughts like that, when you're looking at your thoughts like that and noticing that, you know, if there's not a person that those thoughts are about, because you've gotten the sense that you looked in, you know, you looked in the mirror and looked back on yourself and you get this as a visceral feeling, you know, you get that as, as a visceral feeling. The process involves taking time with a person and helping them to get into that space, right? So, you know, I was just like relating to my daughter and I'm like, okay, so you see how, how this relate also to relate it back with the Course in Miracles, which my daughter is familiar you know, to relate it back to that, you can see how none of these thoughts mean anything. So you don't have to pursue a thought. See, there, there's no, and here's the other part about, about it. The vocation of your mind is to see that these thoughts are meaningless because the purpose of your mind is to be in joy. Right. We talked about last week. I think it may have been maybe even been Friday. I'm not sure. We talked about last week how God's joy is your joy. And when you're not in joy, it's like God misses you. And that and, and that feeling of God missing you is manifest through your body sense. As if you're missing something, as if you're needing something, as if you're longing for something. What a lot of people do is confuse that and think that they're longing for something in the world. Okay, that's what a lot of people do. They confuse that and think they're longing for something in the world, right? So, something, money. If I just had more money, then I would do this. Someone asked me, what would you do if you had uh, all the money in the world? And I go, I don't know. I would have to, what, what, well, what would you do with your business? And I'm like, well, I imagine I'd probably hire people, but I don't know for sure what I would do. <laughs> it's just like, how do you know? It's a mystery. Right. It's like it's like none of this does none of this stuff even matters. It's like this idea, though, that you would be happier if you have something. Right. It's like, like that's not that's the idea. It's like you would be happier or even more on purpose, more on your purpose if you had in your life, if you had something. Right. <laughs> Boy, if I had a million dollars, I would give way more purpose to my life. See what I mean? That's how the ego plays. So Akea did really well. Uh, that's my daughter's name and she'll be back tomorrow. She did really well on feeling these things that I was asking her to get a feeling sense of. I could tell because she would describe it to me. You know, she would describe how it feels to get into each of these. So we went all the way through the process and we were talking about how the thoughts are meaningless and everything. And she's like, you know, what's coming up to me for me is there's no way I can stay in this. And I go, okay, so that's one of those thoughts. That's, I mean, it really is that simple. It's like, a, it's a choice between meaningless thoughts, which are all the same and the truth. It actually is that simple. And, you know, I love getting this modality because it, it, it because it gives me like another way to present to the mind that this is what it is. It is this simple. I mean, this is another, just a really simple process really simple. I had been doing this. I didn't know the piece behind the head. That was not a thing for me. Okay. I, I shared with you guys a bunch of times that all I've done is put my attention into the body sense in the body. It doesn't even matter. It could be in the body sense. The thing is, it's, I, I, I stop identifying. The point is I stop identifying as a thing in here. See, as a thing in the head. As soon as my attention goes, let's say to my toes, right? I'm not identifying as a thing in the head. Okay. So I I'll always get a visceral, a visceral, a visceral, excuse me, sense with that. There will be a sense of what it feels like to shift the attention. And, you know, Abraham Hicks calls this pivoting. Okay. Abraham Hicks calls it pivot, pivoting. So you're, you're on a thought train because you know, because you're feeling like shit. You know, because you're feeling anxious or something like that. You know, you're on a thought train, right? And so then there's this, uh, there's this choice and it's almost like a leap of faith. It's almost like you jumping off of a train. 
right? It's like a little tiny jumping off of a train. And the only reason it's like that is because you're addicted to the thoughts on that train. And because you think it's going somewhere good. And, but you know, you, you know, it's, you actually know it's not, but you know, it's the ego's um, soul safety to make you believe that it's going somewhere that's good. It's whole safety depends on it. it depends on you believing that those thoughts are traveling somewhere that you want to go and you're going to jump on them, right? So it's looking at them from a different perspective. What I was having my daughter, Ikea, do is take each thought that comes up and look at where it's coming from. Notice where it's coming from. When you don't have that sense, when that sense is removed to you that it's coming from the middle of your head. <laughs> what is it what's it worth right so that's definitely some kind of technique that just came to me through this course that i just took you know it's just like that technique of okay look at where it's notice where it's coming from it's got no roots it's got nothing to stand on right and so it's like just take each one one by one this is your whole job in life This is your whole fucking job in life. The ego does not want you to know this job. The ego does not want you to know about this job. Because this is the end of the ego's life. It means the end of the ego's life. The ego has to depreciate the power of your mind. It's caused to depreciate the power of your mind because the power of your mind knowing itself totally absolves the ego so the, it so the mind's always telling you that the mind is not or the ego's always telling you that the mind is not powerful the mind doesn't have the power right that these things are just happening to you aloha cynthia and lori thank you so much for joining i love you yeah, i'm turning those notif notifications off do not disturb baby i'm on wisdom dialogues <laughs> uh so i'll be on sharon sirota's show tomorrow that starts at two o'clock um she sent me a link so what i'm gonna do is put that link for you guys in the chat here on um where the fuck are we zoom okay um <laughs> yeah all right let's see here we go i'm putting it in here you guys can work that out oh wait that's where i'm going for a link never mind i don't think she told me where you guys go i don't even know oh here we go watch link to share okay this is the link for me to share with you guys boom watch tomorrow at 2 p.m hawaii time baby i have no idea what we're be, we'll be talking about but i know it's gonna be deep so join if you dare i'm gonna put this over on facebook too put a little link to it boom that's where you go So it's funny because when I did the, this is by the, by the way, this uh, workshop that I went to over the weekend, it's called Radical Awakening. And it's, it's with a guy named Ramana. I think there's just one name for him. I don't think there's a last name there. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you reach him or anything like that, but I bet you can find him easily if he just said Radical Awakening Ramana. Um, he's been doing stuff in spirituality for a super long time. Um, I think he's like somewhere in his 70s, poss possibly 80 or something like that. But he was named Ramana by Papaji, who's a big name in Advaita. OK, mm -hmm. Papaji is like the one who taught, I think I may, correct me if I'm wrong on this, anyone Muji. OK, um, and then and, and then uh, Papaji was taught by Ramana Maharshi. 
if you know who he is. Okay. So this technique that he's teaching comes down through that lim- lineage. You know, there's lots of references to both Ramana Maharshi and Papaji. No references to Muji. <laughs> probably because he seems to be alive (laughs) the other two dudes are croaked (laughs) yay oh what sweet peeps are on here aloha aloha constance oh his book is on amazon i got the lim i got the lineage correct too according to christine if christine is saying it she fucking knows she's also done a bunch of spiritual stuff since like before i was doing it (laughs) radical awakening radicalawakening.org kaimalino is all the way on it all right so yeah that's pretty awesome um i did a whole workshop on that over the weekend and um but but you know you don't need a workshop on it i mean like if you guys just heard what i just described to you it's that simple like just just chill out and and like experience it what i can do too is i can make a recording if you want if you want a recording of my voice i'll do it i'll just uh, like kind of like lead you through it so you can just like listen to it whenever you want and you can be like oh fuck <laughs> and saying yes so i'm gonna do it i just need one person to want me to do it <laughs> but also i think you can get audio from ramana too if that resonates with you more yay Ah, oh, Lori likes the idea too so um it was funny because I noticed that there's a lot of people, it's the same with the Course in Miracles, it's the same with the people who are following this dude Ramana and Advaita and that kind of stuff. It's the same kind of thing. Everyone is doubtful about themselves, okay? Everyone who who believes that they, uh, they, they're not there yet. Because like if you have, if you have this experience, um, which, you know, really who hasn't, because you just get the experience that you're not that thing in your head, right? If you have this experience and you know, you want this experience, you can just have it whenever you want. There's nothing that can stop you from having the experience, you know? And it's funny because it's like, it's like, there's also this thing of don't get, don't get stuck to, to experience. And true. I like that too. I like that. I, I like that idea um, in the play of all of this. Uh, it's, it's like this notice that your experiencing joy is how you return God's love. You're experiencing joy. That's your gift to God. Okay. So if you're not experiencing joy, which is your whole vocation, then, you know, you want, you, you really want to be doing that. You really want to be in that space. So if you're not just to be aware that you're not letting yourself be there, that in itself is really enough because you see when you're, when you're really perceiving that I hear people say that all the time, but I could tell by the tone of their voice, I could tell by the tone of their voice, they believe they're stuck in it. Oh, well, I guess I'm doing this to myself. Like, oh, woe is me. I guess I'm doing this to myself it's like no stop it faka you 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 don't want that you know kind of like my friend who thought he was committing suicide by the way as of today he's alive and well (laughs) apparently (laughs) you know uh he went he he went on a three week uh uh three week committing suicide attempt thing I think it was about three weeks. He'll correct me if I'm wrong. He listens to all of these. (laughs) Um, And now he's back and he seems like he's a little bit bright eyed and bushy tailed. I can't really tell. Um, I'm still not taking his calls on uh, Facebook. I actually blocked him on Messenger today because he was trying to call me and it's really loud. Like that's the only way to stop one person from calling you on Facebook. You have to block him on Messenger, right? Uh, and I, and I wasn't interested in having a, a messenger conversation with him. That wasn't appealing to me. So I just blocked him on Facebook so that he can't ring through all loud on my computer like that. <laughs> um, but I had a little conversation with him too on wisdom dialogues as he came on wisdom dialogues and he just started asking some questions and I just had a little conversation with him right there. And, you know, I, I let him know he's doing awesome. Cause he's saying, I hope I don't say anything wrong. 
right? So I hope I don't, I get that from some of my friends. Sometimes they're like, I'm ho- I hope I don't say something wrong. Cause I know how you just block things that you don't want. You know, I, ho- I hope I don't freaking get blocked or something. Right. Well, here's the thing. If you, if you do get, if you do get blocked, just come back to me. And, you know, if you let me know that, Hey, I don't want to be blocked. I want to know how to, how, how to interact with you on your page. Let me know. I'll have a conversation with you. I'll make it really clear to you, you know, and let, and let you know what's going on. If that's, if that's what you want to do, just like, let me know. Okay. It's just, it, it's just, uh, it's easier. It's, it's easier that way than to go, Hey, you know what? I would really like it if you do this. It's like, if, if you're, if that's your thing, I'm not like trying to change you. It's fine with me. It's just not interesting to me, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then, and then you're like, Hey, hope, you know what? I really want to be interesting to you. So you'll keep me on your wall and let me make comments and everything like that. Well, call me up and ask me what's interesting to me. And I'll let you know, like what you can talk about that's interesting and, you know, and, and, and see if you like it. I've done that with my husband a bunch of times. Like when I first met him and, you know, uh, he was like a totally different kind of dude. You know, he didn't want to be that way. He didn't want to be that kind of guy. He didn't want to be the guy that wasn't interested, interesting to me, you know? So he would just go, Hey, I don't want to be like that. And I'm like, okay, well, this is what I like. Right. It's just, it's, it's really that simple. So yeah, if you want to, then just let me know. Isn't that fun? Lynn McLean from the UK. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you, Lynn. I really appreciate uh, the energy of the people. And, you know, I was having a conversation about this thing yesterday with Tony about like what, what we're interested in. I told him the story about the uh, suicide guy and, um, and, and he said, he said, yeah, it's really, you know, just a matter of it's almost like weeding. You just weed out the things that aren't interesting to you. And then you just have way more shit that's interesting to you in your space, you know, because it's like you only have like limited space of awareness that you're perceiving through in this thing, right? It's like, it's like, it's all condensed down through this persp- perspective. Even when you're seeing th- as the infinite awareness and the paper mache head, and you're looking back on yourself, still the microcosm is a limited space. It's giving you a limited space perceiving through the microcosm. You don't really have um, space for everyone in the perceived world. You don't have space for everything in the perceived world. And whatever it is that you uh, basically people and things and whatever in your space, it just kind of like, that's what, that's what takes it up. That's what takes up the space. So if you're weeding out the things in your space that you're not interested in, look it, it's the same thing with thoughts, isn't it? That's really what it is. That's really where it's coming from. It's coming from the willingness to weed out thoughts that aren't interesting, right? People are also bundles of thoughts, right? And they're, and, and, and they're performing, they're reacting in a, they're, they're acting in a certain way. They're performing for you. It's beautiful, right? They're just performing for you. They're acting out and they're, they're acting in a certain way. Some of it's interesting to you. Some of it isn't a, a person as a bundle, as a bundle of thoughts is also very changeful. I mean, if Tony wasn't changeful, there, there'd be no way I'd be hanging out with him at this point in time. I mean, I'm not like attracted at, at all to male chauvinism. I'm like, oh, hell no. You're not doing male chauvinism with me. You got to do that with a different broad. I don't do that. <laughs> right. And I'm not doing jealousy and I'm not doing, I'm not having that in my space. It's just really simple like that. And it's loving and it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson. I mean, of course, there's going to be those who don't understand, right? There's going to be do- those who don't understand it. Oh, God, hope she's, you know, so unspiritual. It's so funny because at the um, at the meeting, at the, at the um, two-day, what is it, a retreat? The two-day retreat that we just did, there was a woman there, and she had been on my Facebook. And years ago, I mentioned something about food not being able to really affect the body. And... I don't remember the details. It seems like she wanted to come on and argue about that. 
And it seemed like based on what she told me, because I don't really remember this specific instance, okay? Based on what she told me, I told her that if she kept on continuing with that, I was just going to take her off of my page. And she was like, I come in there and I'm like, hey, hello, I'm Hope, you know? And she's like, oh my goodness. Like, she's like, I had this experience with you and I couldn't believe that you would want to censor anyone's speech. And you know, I laughed and I, and I was like, let's have a hug about that. <laughs> and then we had a hug. And then I go, and, and I go, you know, I just unfriended like 3000 people in the past month or so. And she's like 3000 people. That's a lot. And I go, yeah, you see, I have a message to share in my space. And I, I just don't want interference. I just don't want any interference. She's like, oh, I totally get that. <laughs> and she was just completely okay with it. You know, she was just like, uh, completely like, well, I'm so glad you, you uh, are here. And we talked about that and you laughed about it. And you told me that. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's, that's basically what it is. I've actually, I've unfriended many, many people on Facebook. I actually have not had one person confront me about it in person until this time. A lot of the times I don't even know why I unfriended them on Facebook because I've unfriended so many people. I don't even know I've unfriended them on Facebook and I see them. I have no idea. I have no clue. Recently, it was a funny thing because my friend Gail was like, did you, hey, did you unfriend me on Facebook? Or uh, did I do something wrong? It's so funny. That is some wrong. So that was the energy I got, Gail. I don't, I, I may not, I, that may not even be your perspective. Um, but I was like, <laughs> she she's like she's like holy shit like what did I do and so and and I and I uh I friended her and I go actually you know what in this case I'm pretty sure you unfriended me for being a verse for doing COVID posts <laughs> isn't that the best I, I was like I was like I did not take that personally at all we've hung out a bunch of times since then right that was like back in 2020 or something I was like, I did not take that personal at all. I was just like, you know, there was like a, a sense of, of course, a sense of loss arises out of the ethers, out of nowhere, right? There's a sense of loss, but then I immediately know that it's good. It's all good. It's all for the good, right? I always know it, it's all working together for good. So it's not like it's a problem with it. It's fine, you know? So I forgot about it. I forgot. I, you know, I don't like go on my page troll. If I'm not trolling for you, which I'm usually not trolling for people once in a while I do, but <laughs> if I'm not trolling you, I'm not going to know that you're even gone. I got a bunch of fucking action. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I was, so we had a really fun laugh about that, but I was actually the one that was unfriended on that one. Cause she was like, and she told me too, she was like, gosh, you are just not the person I thought you were or something like that. It was like, and she was very loving about it. She was like, I, it's like, I don't even know you. I felt like she was very loving about it too. And I was like, okay, no worries, you know? And then it was funny because after a little bit of time, then she was interested in what I had to share about COVID. And after a little bit more time, she was like, fuck, how did you know? <laughs> so that's always fun. I love that. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, Gail's on. She's laughing with me. Thank you, Gail. We will never take anything personal because whatever arises is considered a gift and we laugh a shit ton. That's the thing about me and me and Gail. I cannot see, I cannot see me and Gail having any kind of anything where we're like mad at each other because we're just like, you know, like, like our consciousness is at that point where we don't take anything seriously and we both laugh a lot. We just don't take things seriously. So it's not like you did that to me. So of course, you know, when you're in a friendship, hurt feelings arise. But when you're aware that those hurt feelings are coming from yourself, you're in an awesome friendship. That is like a holy relationship, according to A Course in Miracles. Okay. So much space to be, she says. Yes, exactly. Like we're, we're both just fine how we are. The, the only way where it's like, you know what? No, you can't be friends with me. You know, one, if you're trying to prove to me that you're 
committing suicide. I'm not interested in that one fucking bit. That is so lame. Uh, <laughs> that's just like, I, I don't know. You need to go talk to a suicide hotline or some shit like that. Like, go talk to them. You know, you're just like way waiting in bullshit. Okay. You're totally, you're, you're totally committed. You're totally committed. Okay. If you're in the middle of suicide, especially if you're in the middle of suicide for three weeks. Okay. Let me know when you're done committing suicide. Right. <laughs> Go find someone that's going to try. I'm not even going to try to convince you not to commit suicide. I don't give a fuck. Really? Like literally if you're committing suicide, <laughs> <laughs> like go ahead <laughs> okay there's that <laughs> apparently these things are just coming up um if you're uh if you're taking it as if i can do something to you if i can harm you right if i if you're taking me as if i'm harmful am i harmful to you am i harmful to other people you're not going to have me in your experience in that case unless you're trolling me which is fine with me by the way you can go ahead read all my posts Go ahead. I love it. Have at, have at it. Read all my posts. Troll, troll me. I'm talking to you. I love you. Okay. I'm always talking to you. I'm talking to the whole mind when I'm coming through wisdom dialogue. I'm coming through the whole mind. See that? Gail said, I don't use you to harm myself and vice versa. That's right. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. I'm not going to be a, a participant in you harming yourself. That's what it is. That's why I'm not going to play with a fucker who's doing suicide. I'm not a participant in your self-harm. Okay. Yay. Um, just like you recently posted, nothing is missing or, lack, or lacking, not in real life. Yes, that's right. Nothing is lacking. That's right, Constance. Yay, no more blame for Lori. Lori, you've been kicking ass at that for a while, I think. I think you've actually been kicking ass at that one. I could be wrong. I mean, but I, but I get the sense that that's how you do. <laughs> I love that you bring nothing to my everything. You're so fun, Gail. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no shame blame or guilt yep and you know with gail when i would when i would go over to gail's house i would notice her uh, uh you know i say her really loosely because i know it's coming from me right um i would notice her mind moving to shame me for something i was doing or not doing just it's just like an automatic thing uh, automatic thing so the way i would be with that as i would just completely overlook it right I just completely overlook it. So in, in that, what that really means is I'm not buying into the energy as if that's meaningful. So by my not making it meaningful, she can see through it and forgive it, right? Because there's nothing for it to come up against. So it's like, there's this sense that Hope's doing something wrong by the only other person in the house, apparently, right? There's a sense that Hope is doing something wrong. And then there's, a, there's just this sense of, that's not what it is. It's all playful. So I'm still playful with my friend. I'm not taking a defensive posture in my mind, right? I'm just still playful with my friend. And then she shows me that she was just kidding. And, and, and you know, and I know it's coming from me. It, yep. It, and Lori says, it's true. My granddaughter's mom was here for a week. Wow, so much healing. Holy shit. Yeah. Aloha from your jacuzzi. Oh, Carla, that's wonderful. Thank you. Enjoying your wisdom and kicking back. Keep, the, keep up the strong work. Thank you, Carla. Thank you for your Reiki too. Carla is someone I've known for a really long time. We took Reiki practitioner training, another workshop way back when I lived in Orange County, like pretty close to before I moved here to the Big Island. So it was around 2009. And Carla was so, I get goosebumps right now just talking about it. Carla was so sweet to me. She, she would like go get me tea and she'd ask me if I need anything. She'd bring me food and stuff. And I'm like, it's like, you're just totally taking care of me. And she's like, well, you need to be taken care of. And I go, oh my God, thank you so much. I, I don't know if, if Carla, remem Carla remembers that day, but I was like, yeah, thank you. That is so sweet of you. 
Um, and then, you know, I've known her for, year, for years and she's been over to the big island and I haven't seen her in a little while. I'd love to see her again. Um, and I've been back to the mainland, mainland and every time I saw her on, on several occasions, she kept on tuning me up in, in Reiki until she made me a, a Reiki master. That's how you get it. You get it through a lineage like that. So we were in Reiki one, I think I might've taken Reiki two. I don't know. Um, I may have only taken Reiki one in a formal class setting. So what Carla would do is come over and give me the, basically the gist of it, you know, in something that's a bite-sized piece, right? You give me basically the gist of it. I think maybe it took like 10 or 20 minutes. I don't remember. Um, the, the gist of the, the download. And then she do the Reiki thing and basically do by doing Reiki is basically like you're channeling the, uh, the energy of awareness. Okay. The energy of peace and awareness, the same thing I was talking about as what's looking behind this paper mache head and through its eye holes, right? The same thing is that and channeling it intentionally through the hands and then she's using it. And she, there's certain symbols that go along with the lineage. I don't know what they are, um, but she does. And she was doing those on me and like tuning me up to a higher vibration. And it reminds me so much of what it's like to go through one of these radical awake awakenings with Ramana and even to go through the radical awakening that I just did with my daughter. I mean, I, I know from my daughter's experience and talking about it, she is having the experience. Um, she knows what the experience is. Uh, she's had the experience. Just having the experience in itself is enough to plant a seed to just start going. For me, it was a huge like uh, experience, mostly because of Ramana having me tied up to a machine so he could pr prove to the doubting part of my mind that this feeling sensation that I've been feeling for like, I don't know, two decades, maybe, um, probably since Akea was about 10 or 11 years old. Um, and I've been feeling that that is it. He told me that is it on several occasions. That's where you get into, uh, the heart resonance. That's where you're receiving basically the wisdom of the Holy spirit. Basically he can show it on a screen which I think is ridiculously helpful. So that's why I'm probably going to get the heart math thing. And in fact, one of my friends came to visit and she donated me. It was Natalie. She came over here and she donated me a, a really nice amount for wisdom dialogues. So it just occurred to me right now that what I'm going to do is I'm going to vet invested in that heart math thing so that I could see what's going on with the person and I could actually have sessions with them and go, Hey, okay, this is what's going on. I was going to start inviting people to do that with me all over the place. And with Akea, as you know, I did that over the phone. I didn't even do it on, in person. When she comes back over here, we're going to do it in person too. And as many times as it takes, you know, and as many, cause for me, I get it. I, I get an, an opening every single time. I just get like, I, I feel like the, uh, an even stronger, uh, vibration, that healing vibration that I'm, I've grown accu accustomed to know really well. And one way that it speaks to me and, you know, I, I guess everyone has a different experience of it. Um, but for me, it's a pulsating at the head to the point where if I look closely enough in the mirror, I could see it occurring. I could actually Actually see it occurring it's a slow pulsing and I could see it I could feel it I, and you know one day I was curious I was like I wonder if I could see that moving so I'm like allowing that same sensation I'm looking in the mirror and you know it'll get really strong and I can actually see my uh, my forehead going in a certain way um so and you know I could feel it it's almost like a vibration that comes from the back of the head to the forehead and it'll be like warm and like a, a, a mildly pulsing thing. And then from time to time, it'll just start going. It'll be like, boom, 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 where it's like pulsing like that. So, you know, I, I recognize that that's my sign that I've allowed enough relaxation to be in the presence. And basically allowing re relaxation comes down to that looking at what is the root of that thought is one way of saying it. Uh, the way A Course in Miracles says it is that, you know, 
every thought is meaningless and your willingness to see that see it that way makes it that way for you because you are the one believing in its reality or you're denying any belief to it your belief is what upholds it your belief is what the ego depends on for its own life all right lori said thoughts coming up thoughts coming up about how ungrateful she is oh wait a minute i gotta go back to something else my granddaughter's mom was here for a week that's your must be your daughter-in-law wow so much healing i'm guessing that's your daughter-in-law if i worked out the math correctly um thoughts coming up about how ungrateful she is perfect this is perfect i have another friend who's dealing with a daughter-in-law and was talking to me a bunch about it this weekend so this is freaking awesome in fact um when when she and i did the radical awakening for her it was about her daughter-in-law we don't even need to say what it's about but we did a we, we i i don't know if it would be called a, a radical awakening by ramana it was an exercise that we did in his workshop though and it's where um we would work as as partners and she would tell me uh who triggers who triggers her and what kind of things they say to trigger her and then i would play the role of that person trying to get into that role and play that person for them and be that person that's going you know what you failed your fucking son you know just to say all the things that you know would trigger her coming out of that person's mouth right you know you were you just you failed your son you know and her job in that was to look at me like my head's a paper mache head and she could see through my eye holes and into the space of awareness right so that was her job while wow, the triggers were coming up to find that to find to kind of find that resonance and find that space um so yeah that's interesting that that's coming up how ungrateful she is and how she took advantage of us that's great when it seems like someone oh something unfair happened that's the best i love that all thought that thoughts that cloud the love that we are I cannot blame anymore. It's friggin' freedom. Did you just have a good ass time or what? I bet you had an amazing time, Lori. Uh, I think Carla likes the heart math idea. And Lori said heart math has been around a long time. I know. And I, and, and, you know, apparently it's a really awesome thing. It's come in and out of my awareness off and on throughout this journey. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, me too. Me too. I guess you can also, um, you put it to your ear and it measures like some heart resonance. And I guess you can also have it put an alarm whenever you drop be be beneath a certain uh, degree of resonance. Okay, Christine wants to talk with me, how fun. Fun to have you on, Christine. Hello. Yay. So, um, yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fun. This is so fun. So my experience today was I did what you did. I was wondering if I could see it. So I looked in the mirror yeah. and what I is I didn't see what you saw. Mine was a little different. Like everything got fuzzy. Nice. Everything got fuzzy. And I was the whole image got fuzzy. Yeah. The whole image of the face was okay. just, it was, it wasn't really there. It was, you know, it was real obvious that there was no one there. Oh yeah, I've seen that before too. Yeah, okay. totally, totally. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. That's pretty good, huh? There's nothing it, here. There's not the arms. There's no part of it is here. There was nothing there. It was so funny. I know. Then, I think the experience of it. The experience. I can really see. To, today, I finished a session with a client and. I don't know. I was just prompted to share the energy with her, not the concept, not the process like you with Ikea, uh -huh. but just, I, I just had the image of if I look through her and she looked through me, that she would be able to feel the consciousness and it would bring her into her body and it would bring or bring her I'm back. Sure, I'm sure. But it was on video and it works. Oh, nice. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so it was just right on, on video. Zoom, Zoom call. Yeah, and I was like, I Great. don't know if this will work. I had, I said I'm just prompted to try it. And she said, let's play. Oh, and she was into it. 
she was into it and she felt the spaciousness and the stillness and the fuzziness. It was, it was amazing to see that it, it doesn't matter where it is, whether it's on the phone or video, it's all, it's, <laughs> there is no separation. There is, you know, it just proves. Oh that yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm guessing you can imagine the person <laughs> oh, yeah. without, without a video. Why not? Why not? <laughs> That's awesome, Christine. That's so awesome. Christine had a profound experience where she just like freaking, she just was, just saw it. I, I, I uh, well, what I get, Christine, it's kind of like what occurred for me in Vipassana, where it just all just came together all of a sudden. And it's like, holy shit. But you know how you, you, you wanted to rest and all this stuff. I still had six days of Vipassana to bask in it. <laughs> right in the in silence and you're like Shh, i just want to like be quiet and rest <laughs> most of today has been laying in bed and breathing not in, in, or laying on the hammock and looking at the ocean i mean it's just been Beautiful. yeah that's so nice to be in that space too it's undeniable right once you i think that you really sense sense it that there's no more denying of it that uh, it changes it changes it forever there's no more using thoughts to hurt yourself yeah it seems stupid that's ridiculous why would you do something stupid right <laughs> it just seems so dumb <laughs> Or, or yeah, or someone else, yeah, using someone else or something else. Right. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christine. I love you. I love you too. Hi, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray for Lori. Uh -huh. <laughs> I started all this originally for Lori when Lori was um, asking me so many questions on Facebook, I think it was like, maybe like 2016. And, um, and I was like, I don't want to type this much. Let's just go on zoom or something. So Gail, you said you heard a Freudian slip a basing. I have no idea where that was. Aloha baby cakes. Oh, thank you. You guys are so cute to each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it just makes no sense to, that's what I was sharing with my daughter, Akea. I was like, look, you got this. You got this. And that's what I share with everyone. Like, you got this. There's no journey you have to take about this. There's no self you need to make into some kind of good self. Right? And the interesting thing is, yeah, it's like, it's all in my mind. So now that Christine talked to me about that, like, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to sit and we're going to have sessions and we're going to sit like that and we can play with different things. We'll, we'll sit like that and we can even just look like, look at each other like that and just, you know, we'll like wake up right now. There's no need to wait around. There's nothing that can wait, you know, have you waiting around. And, you know, if you listen to my uh, one of my last uh, wisdom dialogues called it's the last one on is the last one I have on uh, YouTube because I keep on saying shit that would get my video flagged on YouTube. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to post it there when that happens. So we'll see what happens on this one if that occurs. Um, yeah, it's a <laughs> but it, it's just it's like, you know, it's like let's wake up now. It's like, there's no need to wait. If you look at uh, geriatric dialogues, you'll see how, um, <laughs> share the love for your chance. Oops, share the love. Okay. Uh, thank you, Christine. So yeah, it's, you know, I, I mentioned how at first, like when I went to the very first thought song that, what, that Ramana did, it was, you know, everyone was coming up in a parade almost of suffering. They're just coming up talking about their suffering. And then what I heard was also um, Ramana say that he's suffering, right, along with them. 
and saying, you know, that he's suffering along with them. And, um, and it's basically suffering over aging, which is perfect for me. How could it be more perfect? I love this. Everyone's suffering over aging in my mind. Um, and they're like coming up kind of as a parade. And then I hear Ramana say, I hope to be relieved of this suffering in this lifetime in the sot song. I hear him say that. And, you know, uh, I'm sitting like right in front of him. And I feel like some energy go out toward him. It's like, almost like, you know, it's like some energy from the heart, just like, kind of like leap that, that uh, you're going to have it. Like there was just an awareness. You're going to have it. So then, you know, so then, you know, during our session, when I had a session with Ramana, um, I told him I really enjoyed the satsang. I said it was very awakening for me. It, you know, it showed me that I basically have a choice to make all the time. And, and I could like, I could choose to stop making that choice and start making other choices and suffer for it, basically. And, you know, his response in that moment was, well, there's no chooser. And I'm like, oh, well, okay, that's true too. All right. And I didn't, I didn't take it any further than that, but I just knew that everything was okay. For one thing, he had that lie detector and the thing uh, uh, hooked to my ear for it. Right. He had the thing hooked to my ear. So it was like, I actually, what, like he could see that there's some heart thing going on and there's a sense of an urgency, like he needed help. So I took that sense of urgency, like he needed help and took all of the idea that that's coming from anywhere, but outside of my mind. And I knew that it was perfect. And if I was to be used as an instrument to help him, then that would be the case. If not, no, that it was just the associating association, um, that, you know, what it showed on the thing, this association with something having to go out and correct something that was a non-resonant feeling non-resonant uh, the one way of saying it it's a it's based on a thought that is meaningless it's based on a thought that denies what's true okay so basically I, I i was able to just be released from that in that instant and see like through you know he's watching the screen a visceral change he's like there it is okay there it is there now we're now we're at that so then I'm sitting next to him and I'm giving an account of my experience of how, you know, uh, how it is to like perceive through the back of the head and stuff like that. And, um, and I'm, and I'm saying, as I'm sitting there on there next to him on the couch to everyone in the room, that all of you got this, you, you know, if you're sitting in this room, if you're listening to my voice right now, all of you got this when you're not getting it. You're just not doing it. You don't want it. You're, that's you. You got this, right? And I heard. I saw some people shaking their heads in the room. It was so cute. And then Ramana goes, "Yeah, it's really just a choice." That he's like, "That's the thing to get. That you. It's really you. Just choose it. You just choose it. See that? So then, that's exactly the healing right there." If, it, if, if he, if he knows that, then there's no suffering for him. If he knows that there's no suffering for him. Right. So it's not, that's not in my perception anymore that he's suffering or is even capable of it. If he knows that, how is he even capable of suffering? No way. He's not doing it. And I didn't do shit. I didn't do anything. You know, it, it came out of me, something spoke out of me about it during the session I had with him, but that's, uh, you know, that's just not my doing. <laughs> in fact, in the story, I'm hooked up to some shit where it's like, it's a lie detector one freaking <laughs> heart thing to see what the heart resonance is. And he can see everything that's going on in me. <laughs> He could also tell with the monitor when you moved into res resonance. Yeah, I know. Uh, yep, exactly. Exactly. That was that was huge. Because it's like to that little doubtful uh, piece in my mind, there's the evidence that this is this is what this is what you want. This is the real. Like there's no even like refuting it. It's like so obvious. So, you know, 
I've been, you know, I've been people tell people tell me, I tell them like, I've been like this. They're like, you've been like that the whole time. This is what you always do. Uh, yeah. And, and there's another level of it. <laughs> okay. There's actually, because, you know, like I've talked to you guys about a lot before, you know, there's things that I'm not aware that I'm not aware of. You know, there's, there's things that I'm thinking that I'm not aware that I'm not aware of. Right. It's like it's it's like they're they're actually I, I, we're all very good at covering them up. That's why you can perceive as if there's a body sitting here. OK, I'm a fucking genius at that stuff. And so are you guys. So it's like you can you can say it like this, though. The ego is a is a genius at it because it's that self image that you made with the ego. That's the one being talked about in all of the thoughts. And when you recognize that it's not really there, there's no one even doing these things. The ego is a concept fighting, actually fighting for its own life. That's what concepts do. The ego is fighting for its own life. And, you know, it's like, it, it's like, it's not even, it's not even like a war for you, but there is a need for your vigilance because there is a projected war going on. Okay. You don't have to fight, but there is a need for your vigilance in being aware that this is just the ego and you are not the fucking ego. None of that stuff means anything. None of it's none of it matters. I shared with you guys a couple weeks ago that inner voice that's the small child that they have all those different little child work and bullshit like that. Uh, I mean, I say bullshit light, lightly. And you know what also I I also say it in a way that uh, that is a, a during of the pro of the process because it's necessary until you get to the point uh, where you're at the point right now if you're hearing my voice okay if you're hearing my voice right now you don't need that you do not need that if you're hearing what i'm saying you do not need any inner child work what you need is willingness to see that the inner child is actually the ego okay that is the ego's voice trying to tell you that uh, that there's something for you to fix about yourself that someone's crying that something's wrong this, this is not this is not a reality that something happened in the past look at no thought is meaningful at all without the identity the idea that you are a part of that thought in fact in the center of that thought actually if you're not assuming that you're in the center of that thought the thought disappears. It's meaningless to you. It's already meaningless, but then it's meaningless to you. Okay. You posted the same time I said it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. That was, uh, that's some good synchronicity there. We're on the same wave. That's awesome. Um, so I don't know, Christine, if you knew about my story, uh, uh my story about the Ramana experience before or after you went or if you're just finding out right now um but yeah that's some powerful stuff and gosh I, i'm just so grateful to ramana he's he's such an awesome just an awesome awesome teacher i mean when i when when that stuff came out about you know the the perceiving that he's suffering you know you know it, it's like that's why i call it geriatric sot song casey said a better name for it might be suffering sot song because <laughs> it was just a bunch of suffering the whole time um and then the next sot song that i went to wasn't like that at all he actually talked about suffering as something that there's a way out of uh, okay this time is, is something that he uh, there's a way out of now um you know there's not that kind of like you know what's coming through me uh, right now is like hey you guys you all you've got this right now like you don't have to it's not like this ho hum it's probably gonna uh go back and forth back and forth no you got this if you're going back and forth with it you already you know you you're just fooling yourself you totally got this okay and at the same time uh, you know if there's only this instance so you don't need to focus on whether you went back and forth five minutes ago that's what I'm saying. All right. It's not, a, oh gosh, I didn't get it or something like that. It's right now you are making a choice. Is that thought meaning meaningful? It made me laugh because one of the women in the group, um, you know, the one she shared, she shared that she didn't really have a good experience and not a deep experience in this exercise that we did. And, you know, 
there's like this struggle over it's like so fucking what because right now is the moment and that's exactly where you're cutting the legs or the roots off of those thoughts right it's exactly where it's like you just it, it's like uh it's like one way i read um ramana put it it's like the cat is sitting outside the mice hole so the mice aren't even going to try to come out and play around in the house right it's like you're just you're in, you're guarding your mind that way right now see when you're when you're making doubtful thoughts you're thinking of the past you're thinking with the ego so it's just right now you can have that what people call enlightenment right now enlightenment is basically release of all of your burdens you got no burden you got no stress you got no pressure you just yeah you you know you're just playful you just you're just you're just playing isn't that the sweetest christine i love that i love that that was so it was so amazing for me you know because there's it's like this this uh, uh you know this idea that uh, first of all that you know this is wrong what the fuck kind of teacher is this coming around saying that suffering is real and by the way i'm suffering too and i've been doing this fucking sot song thing for like 30 or 40 years i don't know how long maybe longer than that that fucker's old apparently um but it's like uh, that's like the, the the that's like the energy that arises right and this is exactly what i'm talking about so this is what it it showed me this is the energy that arises and this is exactly the energy that needs to be get cut off by the truth and you know what that's really what i was practicing inside of the um the whole satsang these thoughts would occur to me and i'm noticing them on a ticker tape you know i'm just noticing them and i'm like being and i shared with that right after i was at that very first thought song it was maybe some weeks ago but the 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 video on um youtube is called geriatric thought song if you want to check it out um it's also on all of the podcast channels it's called by the same name i made it a catchy name so i would know if i referred to it i knew i'd be talking about for that for a while on the ride home with the people who brought me to it my dear friends billy and kc they brought me to that sot song uh, we first of all kc named it geriatric sot song and i go oh i'm going to be talking about that one for a while <laughs> i could just tell i could i could just totally tell so it's like it's like all those thoughts dissipated right away about him being a problem because of this teaching right about him being a problem because for, uh, for one thing too i'm in the practice of constantly acknowledging that this is coming from my mind and i even told him in you know it's like in the, in that thing i go but i know that i just made it all up that it's coming from my mind and i wanted you to say that like a puppet to me i can see that right now because here i go out of resonance because now there's this, and then here's what I didn't see. I didn't see that that sense that I need to, uh, that sense that I needed to help him. So there's thoughts that are still being covered up that I'm not aware of. Using that thing, I could see him easily. So that's a great device. It's like, oh, it's like, that's a huge awakening. It's like, shit, there, that's, I wasn't aware that I wasn't aware of it. See what I mean? that's why i'm stoked about this i'm stoked about just the energy of um you know helping people and people helping each other and everything like that uh, to to see what it is that is keeping us out of heart resonance because look when we're in a heart resonance the world is not what it seems what it seems to be right now the veil is lifted that is how the veil is lifted when we're all in heart resonance that's how it's lifted and here's the thing remember it's a dream of awakening. There's not we're all at all, right? It's a dream of awakening. So who's the Christ in the dream, right? You are. That's right. That's right. You're the one who's 100% responsible for awakening the whole world, right? So that's how it goes, you guys. It's a it's a dream of awakening. We're, we're making it up. So we can make it up like I'm not there yet. Or we could just seize the moment 
Now, then I'm going to go over again. So, because, you know, people forget about this. It, it drops out of the head really fast. It's really funny. And, you know, it's like, and here's the thing. You don't have a head, so you don't even have to try to store it in your head. Look at that. Don't try. Just relax. It's okay. I don't mind. I have really good patience. My friend Casey reflected that to me um, uh, on the ride. She said, you just have really good patience. And I go, well, that's one reason I can go so far so fast. I'm very patient with myself right? I don't, I, I don't wallow in guilt. And that's one thing a, cor a Course in Miracles talks about too. Any upset feeling is guilty. It's a guilty feeling. I don't wallow in guilt. I give myself that uh, compassion, I guess you can call it. I give myself that um, respect. <laughs> I don't have to do that, right? So, so here's, a, here, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. A thought is the only thing that can hurt your mind. A thought is the only thing that can make you seem like you're sick. Okay. So right now, if you're feeling any kind of upset feeling, it's because you're believing in a thought and that thought has no value whatsoever. Okay. So your willingness to be aware of that is all it is. That's all it is. Your willingness to be aware of that is it. That, that cuts like the roots off of it. It's like uprooting that thing. See that? And everything else takes care of itself. Your boundaries, for instance. You know, when, when I didn't understand boundaries and I thought that I was responsible for setting the boundaries and then I realized there was no I. You know what? The way I looked at it was, I'm not going to set any boundaries, which was perfect at that time, because as the separate self that I thought it was, I said, I'm not setting one fucking boundary. I'm just going to notice what happens. I'm not going to try to set it up in a way that I want to notice it. I'm just going to notice how it happens. I'm going to notice what goes on. I'm going to notice my reaction to people crossing my boundaries. I'm going to notice what thoughts come to me right? I had no boundaries at all. It was perfect. I just let anything come. Anything at all. And you know what? It's still the same way. I still have no boundaries. It's amazing. I never decided, okay, now I'm gonna have boundaries. I have no, fuck. I just let anything come. And in the world, I appear to have very good boundaries. I don't even get people fucking pervy flirting with me. Okay, so here we go. Lori. Do you think you're awake? Okay, so there's not that, that that's not a question that's meaningful to me one bit because there's only awakeness. There's not me being awake. There's not me. All right, there's only awakeness, right? So there's no me being awake. I will say this is enlightenment because it's the release of burdens. It's the release of all burdens that are on your mind in that space of awareness. All burdens on your mind in that space of awareness. That is a definitely, uh, to me, look at the word enlightenment. That's a definition of enlightenment. Okay. I would say that's a def. But is, is someone enlightened? No, it's not like that. Okay. Uh, that, that is the experience of en enlightenment when you just have no burdens on your mind. Okay. That's what it is. I feel like I am. Okay. Then that means you're not. There's, there's just no enlightenment. There's no enlightened person. All right. That's what I'm saying. Since I don't take anything personally, this too shall pass. Okay. Just the speaking like that. I feel like I am enlightened is passing. Okay. It's awesome. You got an opening. You're stoked. You're well on your way. Um, it's, you have not had the experience of what enlightenment is. If it seems like you're enlightened. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, you don't take anything. You haven't taken anything personal um, lately. You're probably going to take something personal again very soon. Um, I'm not like telling you that 
you know, I'm, I'm not telling you that because I want you to suffer over taking something personal. I'm telling you that because it's giving you some foresight, uh, some, uh, some readiness for when it arises, what to do with it. Okay. Because, because I, I, I'm familiar with this pattern. I'm very familiar with this pattern. And what it does is it comes up to make an identity of an enlightened thing. Okay. And then what happens is you get your ass kicked hard. Okay. And I've experienced this with you. I'm not saying that, that, that you're, you don't got it. You got it. I'm telling you that when it comes back around, this is just to prepare you because you tend to get blindsided. Okay. Because when it comes back around, this is that for me too, for me too, I'm going to get the sense of taking something personally again. You know how I know I'm perceiving a body. You know what the healing is? It's noticing that there's still enlightenment. It never went anywhere. Okay. I expect to, because I'm perceiving a body and this is great because I'm perceiving a body. Okay. I expect to take something personally and then immediately go, fuck. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay. So it's not like I don't take anything personal. It's more like nothing is personal. And therefore, in the moment, I'm, deser I'm determined to see that. Okay? Expect that these things are coming and expect that you can be completely playful and loving and fucking stoked with them. Okay? Because there's perceiving a body. That's what it is. See? There's this, this special eye that you made is looking for things to be really easy. Which is great. Hey, that's awesome. They are really easy. The thing is, the special sense of I would perceive taking something personally as a major backslide at this point. You got to be the guardian around those kinds of thoughts, right? You got to be the guardian. You got to be the cat. It's not letting the mouse out of the hole. <laughs> Yay. Or is it awakening that never ends? No, it's not an awakening that never ends because it ends in creation. It ends in creation. And then, you know, uh, uh, it cre in creation, there's no nothing to awaken to. There's nothing to awaken to. There's only endless creating. Endless, expansive, limitless creating and joy. There's not awakening. There's nothing to awaken from. There's no block therapy as wonderful as it is, as beautiful as practicing block therapy is. There's no block therapy in creation, but block therapy is a tool. It's a device uh, on the way to creation. It's a, it's a device. I, I feel from my point of view and the way I use it, it's a, it's a device for undoing the cause of fear. Okay, it's a device for undoing that. And the way it's used as a device like that is that you're getting in touch with the pain that you're projecting onto the body right in that moment. That is the pain being projected onto the body. And you know what? I'll have the visceral experience of that limitless awareness coming through the back of my head and out my eyes while practicing block therapy. And I believe, Christine, you're probably doing the same thing because Christine just got another block from me and she knows how to party on the block. Um, so I'm guessing she's she's also experiencing that because, you you know, and that's really the point when you're when you're in block therapy is to get that quiet space, you know, and and really since since my practice has always been to put my attention right to the body sense. This is just second nature for me to be putting my attention to the pain, whatever pain I'm bringing up on the block. And in that, I don't have to pursue any of those thoughts that are coming up. All right. She, oh, Christine's on the block now. Yeah. By the way, when you come to Wisdom Dialogues on Friday, feel free to bring blocks. I mean, I, I tell people I was on the block last Wisdom Dialogues. I had it under my sit bone the whole time. And I showed Christine my butt. And she, she was like, holy shit. And, 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 and then uh, another friend, I think it was another friend was there, um, said, how did you do that? And I'm like blocking, 
Like you sit on the sit bones and see, the thing is I have like a juicy butt. Like that's just the way I'm, uh, the way I'm wired. Okay. That's the way this body is wired. Um, so, so the thing is, it's like the aging thing seems to take place and then it gets flatter and flatter and flatter as you go along. So I got a before and after picture from like seven months ago where it was flatter. It was doing that thing. And I keep on sitting on my sit bones and stuff. And over time, uh, seven months of it, apparently, I got a bubble butt again. In fact, I keep on noticing my boob in this video and I got a boob again. Like I've been, uh, yeah, it's a trip. And, uh, and one of my friends saw my butt and she's like, oh my God, your butt is so big. And it reminded me of the prelude to that rapper song. Uh, I like big butts because uh, because on the on one of the preludes, you can hear like there's these two white chicks and they're like, oh, my God, her butt is so big. And it, and it's funny because she was trying to trigger me. You know, she's a good friend of mine. She's trying to trigger me with it because that's what she's playing with me with. Right. Because because uh, there's another part to that story. I'll get to that, too. Um, yeah, because that's what she's playing with me with, because there's like barely anything that can trigger me that she could find, except when she starts talking about my body, which is I'm like, I need that. Go ahead and give that to me all you fucking want. She's like, oh, my God, it's gross. <laughs> It's just so funny, but I don't know. I didn't feel triggered at all because I was just like, uh, I was, I was just like, wow, I'm so glad to hear that because I've been noticing it being flat. So if like, you're telling me now my butt's so big that it's gross. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I watched this thing. I watched this apparent body image from before I started block therapy at 99 pounds. Okay. It's now up to like 120 pounds, apparently. Now, apparently, what block therapy it says it does is it builds more blood, which I sense definitely. Things just seem full. I don't know if you guys noticed too, but things just seem to have more of a fullness to them, um, which is the kind of vibe. I was looking for um, in the first place. And, you know, in the second place, the way I'm using it, the way I'm using block therapy in the moment is not to try to shape my body in any way. I don't know how it's going to work, but what they're telling me in block therapy is that these cells have a particular place in the blueprint where they're designed to be. And I feel that that is true. That feels very true to me that every cell in the body is actually, um, it's, well, it's projected for one thing. And as a projection, it has a blueprint of where it's supposed to be situated in space. Okay. Um, now through perceiving us ourselves as we are not, we have caused the body to twist and turn, and especially with time, uh, to twist and turn in basically grotesque ways, okay? I know we try to sugarcoat it all the time. Oh, isn't it so beautiful that my fucking elbow just grew four, ounce, four inches out with fascia? You know, people just have these thick-ass bones and stuff, and, you know, it's like adding, adding, adding on. It's like gripping, adding, gripping, adding, gripping, adding on, hardening everything up, deflating all the cells to make them saggy, right? And so it's like sucking all the juice out of everything. This is symbolic. It's a symbol. So using this tool to get into the protected pain, it's projected and it's also protected pain that's being held in the, in, in the body sense. And it's kind of like going backwards because the thoughts that are crossing your awareness while you're in that pain, that's it. That's where you're being asked to see through it. That's where, you know, you're being given the opportunity to make yourself glad, to have more joy. That's what I was talking with Akea, and Akea's on now. Um, she's listening now. Um, I was talking with Akea about, you know, you are the one who, who decides whether those thoughts are meaningful or not. You are always the one. So if you're taking it as if, okay, the thought says this, so therefore that is what it is, right? That is what it, that is what it is. This means something like, for instance, Achaia, for Achaia, the thought that said, I just feel like I can't do this all the time. And okay, all the time is actually right now. 
the thought that says, I feel like I can't do this all the time is one of those meaningless thoughts. Isn't that so simple, you guys? So, so you don't have to go on that train. Oh gosh, I wonder when the next Ramana workshop is so I can get some more uh, of that experience, right? So I can get some more of that experience and like grip onto this experience. It's all the ego. That's all just the ego. That's not even you. One woman at the workshop told me that she's shy. I go, well, shy is the ego. That's not you. You know that, right? She's like, yeah, I do know that. And I was like, there you go. So you see shy and it's not, it's not anything. It's nothing, right? Another woman was tending to get really jumpy. Okay. Tending to get like really triggered in a jumpy way. Or it's like, you just got to go take care of that right now. You know, the body movements are like jumpy, right? Like that. And she did it when she was standing right next to me. And then she goes, she goes, gosh, I'm so sorry. I know I shouldn't be triggered. I shouldn't be reacting like that. And I just looked at her and I go, you are doing awesome. Yeah. And she's like, I am. I'm like, yeah, you are doing fucking awesome. And it's like, I could just sense that there's a, a relaxation in that. You can't get it wrong. There's no way you can get it wrong. And that's the thing. It's like, okay, if you get the experience that you're jumpy and you're triggered, what's, what's, a really, what's a really good way to be with that? Do you guys know? Does anyone know? What's a really good way to be with that? Like, say you see your, yourself, yourself acting all jumpy and triggered. I love that about myself. Really, you'll go so far so fast you won't even fucking believe it. Oh my god, I love that about myself. That is just that that is just such a different energy than oh my god, I shouldn't be that way. I love that about myself. This is what I'm given to learn through. This is what I'm given to gladden myself. One of my friends, one of my friends said, I, I go, I don't think I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm really a, a, a rule or a rule follower follower, but then again, I can be rigid. And she's like, yeah, that's, that's right. You can be rigid. And I was like, I know, I love that about myself. And she's like, I love that about you too. It's just like, this is what I'm given to make myself glad about right now. And you'll see that the the nervous kind of energy, all that nervous energy is just from believing a thought like that. It's like it's it's perceiving a thought as, as if it has that kind of power over you. It has no power over you. All right. That's really how it is. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, all of the I thoughts seem to not be helpful. Yay. Yay. It feels like the message is coming through to let go of any thought talking about myself. And that's all the thoughts, isn't it? Unless it's a thought of the spirit. And look how, how, how much deeper that brings you into peace. So of course, you, you know, you're, you want to allow the thoughts of the spirit. Look how they feel. You could tell, and you could tell the difference so easily, right? Look how they feel. They feel so good. They feel relaxing. They feel peaceful. They feel helpful. The ego's thoughts, we think they're helpful because that's what the ego wants us to think. We think from this space of right here. And even we think makes no sense to me anymore because the thought isn't coming from there. It just seems like it. It's actually coming from nowhere. A thought from nowhere is coming and telling us that something's meaningful in the world. There's no person for that to be about. So therefore the thought isn't meaningful and it can't be helpful. Good job, Akea. Akea had a radical awakening over the phone. She And she was laying down, Christine. And Akea was laying down. I just changed the words because she didn't want to get up. She was feeling like, you know, anxious and tired from feeling anxious. So she was laying in bed. And, you know, I didn't have her get up or anything. I just... I, I just did it, did it like, instead of using behind you, using it from the sense of below you, because she was laying on her back and she's in the, Dis you're in a Disneyland hotel, right? Okay. She's in a Disneyland hotel. She's like all these stories up and stuff, but it doesn't even matter at all. 
I've done this before when I when I've had a constantly yelling boyfriend. I always wanted to defend myself and I got the message to stop talking about myself about it and just breathe. Yep. I remember that yelling boyfriend that didn't last very long. <laughs> you just went, you see, see the difference. Okay. That's a really good demonstration because so many people struggle it out in these relationships where they have someone yelling at them and then they'll leave the relationship shame the person for having been yelling at them and then find the same thing again in someone else right okay baroque that pattern like she because that's and, and it was that simple she got the message to stop talking about herself about the situation and just breathe it is really that simple and it's like there's a lot of different techniques that could be used for this and they're all useful and any of them can be used at any time, right? I've told people before, pinch yourself if that resonates for you because your attention going from the thought process to the sensation of the pinching is all it takes. A few seconds of that and you're just, you're, you're getting released, you're getting released. I'm going to put my uh, headphones in and walk into Disneyland. Yay, Akea. Akea is going to Disneyland with wisdom dialogues in her ears. <laughs> I'm so glad you're going. I'm so glad you're feeling better too. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, she wasn't sure if she was going to go. Um, she didn't. She didn't feel like she had the energy today. But, you know, you definitely, you know, like, Akea, you're familiar because Akea has studied A Course in Miracles. Akea, you're familiar uh, uh, with Jesus is saying about how energy comes from awakening, not from sleeping. So that's the key. Any sickness, anything. You don't have to go on Google and even look for anything you don't have to type in your symptoms or anything like that but look if you find yourself doing it you could also be doing that very same exact thing through that same resonance that i'm talking about and that's really what it, all it is if you can get if you can find your way and you can uh because it's a choice to that resonance look it it may take a choice to um to make 10 thoughts meaningless to get yourself into that space to feel that resonance just keep doing it. Just keep making those thoughts. They are meaningless. To the ego, you're you're lying, but you know you're not once you've had this experience. Okay. I've slept so much and have not felt better. And that and all that's helped is being with you. Oh, okay. Uh, I love you. I'm so glad you're coming home and being with you too. And we were together over the phone, weren't we? We can do that anytime and you're going to, and you're going to be here in person. Oh, by the way, Akea, I am, I didn't tell you this and I, and I didn't realize this till after I got off the phone with you, but I fucking am not coming to pick you up tomorrow. Your dad's going to go by himself because I, I totally forgot. I, it wasn't even on my calendar. I have a interview tomorrow on moment to moment at two o'clock. So if I were to come over there and pick you up, which I'm not um, because you come in at 1130 and that's just cutting it too close for comfort for me. Um, I'm going to be here and I'm, I'm going to see you when you get over here and we're going to fucking hang out when you get over here. So I love you. <laughs> so you're going to be with me soon enough. You're going to be with your dad first. I think that'll be really wonderful for you to spend some time with your dad too. That's going to be amazing. Make him go to the beach. He said he will. Christine said, I used to use a rubber band in my wrist and snap it to leave the thought and change where the energy and attention was going. That's hilarious, Christine, because it's kind of like a little penalty. <laughs> it reminds me of like Christian, like hitting you on the knuckles or something like that. Shock therapy or something like that. I'm not saying I'm not knocking it or saying anything against it. I think it's fucking awesome. Um, okay, well, I love you, Akea said, and see you then. Yay. Okay. Oh, I love you, Akea. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fun to hang out with your dad. That'll be good for you to have some dad time too. I know it's perfect because I know all things work together for good. 
Oh, you used to believe in punishment, Christine. Not anymore. Not anymore. So Christine knows. So Christine, just to give to just to give you a heads up, I know the fucking bliss. I know the fucking bliss here you're, you're in. Um, and and man, you are uh, you are not being identified as an I at all. That's in that bliss. That's what I notice. You're not uh, being identified with this. Still, the same thing goes for you. Watch that. A thought comes up. You already talked about having something like that um, in in your share, but watch that though. Something comes up and it seems like you've lost it. Laugh at that. That is not a thing, uh, you know. But that but that is the way the ego works. And it's like there's a there there's a lot a, for a lot of us, um, for most of us, and it might not be the case for you, Christine. I really don't know. Um, but for most of us, the process goes where something will come up and we'll get the sense that we've lost it. So if you get the sense that you lost it, which is probable, right? It's not 100% for sure, is probable. You know what? You're just going to sink even deeper when you go, that's not true. That's not true at all. So hooray, everyone. Yeah, we're stoked. Now back to, because this is an important piece and I talked about it last week, but I like to repeat things for a while so that it comes through, especially when it's a new, um, it's a newer awareness. And this is really a newer awareness for me. It's something that, um, that percolated uh, in, through and after at our Course in Miracles meeting last Thursday. And it has to do with, God's longing for you to return. Okay. Um, someone in there got triggered and she said, that just really triggers me that, um, you know, hearing that, like, I don't want to like, like feeling like the feeling to me was from my perspective, I don't want to feel like God suffers, right? I don't want to feel like God suffers. I don't want to feel like he's, uh, uh, that he's longing for me. Okay. Uh, but look at it this way all God created you for is joy. That is your only function. And that is God's joy as well. That's how you return the love to him. He created you in love. And that's how you return the love to him. You're in joy. Okay. Um, and if you're not finding yourself in joy, what do you experience? You experience a longing for it. You don't know a lot of the times that it's for joy. You get the idea that you're longing for something else. You get the idea that you're longing for maybe a body um, or maybe some money or maybe uh, more purpose. You know, I saw one guy on Facebook. He's such a sweetheart. And, you know, he plays music and everything. And he posted a picture of himself just looking so upset. His sweet little face. You know who I'm talking about, Kai Molino. His sweet little face. It just looks, looks so, I mean, I could see. Uh, you know, just looking at his picture, um, you know, just this sense of just like lost despair, utter despair in the, on the, on the face of this, this boy, I'm saying boy, cause he's probably like 25, 28 years old. And, uh, apparently I'm a shit ton of older than that, <laughs> which just makes me laugh. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, anyways, you know, it's, it's this sense, like I'm just, I'm just so lost. I'm just so lost in this, uh, uh, these, these thoughts and this sense, and, you know, I'm so lost like this, this is your longing for God, you know? So, uh, you know, if, if, if that person by chance hears or sees wisdom dialogues, there's no such thing as really chance. He'll need to know if he hears it. Or maybe he hears it from someone else. Who knows? But basically what it is for someone in this like kind of despair, like he feels like he's just like given so much in terms of, and he has, he's lovely. Uh, his music, tuning into the spirit. Um, he's fallen into a state of depression. This is his story. Um, I'm making it up. I make up even his story. <laughs> <laughs> I look at that. I make up history too. So that's how that, that goes. Uh, 
uh, you know, there's like this, this deep sense of despair, which isn't deep at all. Cause it's really right on the surface. It's all thoughts. It's all just thoughts. And he, he's done so he, he's done so well, but just for a, a, a sense and he is doing so well, let's say he's doing awesome right now. Um, this, this sense of this depression and stuff like this, it's all based on thoughts of wanting the world to be different than what it is. Okay. So it's, it's wanting the, um, the appreciation to come from the world. Uh, what we don't see is that that longing for appreciation is God's kind of like missing us in heaven. Okay. He's missing our presence in heaven, our joy in heaven. That's what that longing for the world to be different is and see how it's so convoluted. It looks like, gosh, I've been working so hard. I've been getting into my bliss. I've been writing all these beautiful songs and I can't fucking support myself. The people are not supporting me. I know that one really, really well. I, I play with it a lot more lightly though. I play with it way more lightly than that. Um, and you know, that's just how it is. That's just how it's been for me. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to be in a wisdom dialogues kind of vibe. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to be in that vibe with them. Basically, if I don't appreciate them, I'm going to get the sense that they're not supporting me. That's all it is. That's all it is all the time. If I don't appreciate them, I'm going to get the sense that they're not supporting me. That's how it is. See, everyone who comes into my experience is coming into my experience for teaching and learning my own teaching and my own learning to myself, not to make them anything, but that's why they're coming into my experience. See, because of that, there's naturally gratitude for them, whether they're, they seem to be supporting me or not supporting me. You know, I talked about on one wisdom dialogues, how, uh, you know, Bob shine over at, uh, over at, uh, what is it? The trading post, uh, Bob shine, he was not the kind of host I was looking for. Okay. That was not the kind of host I was looking for, but in not in one moment, would I think that he was not supporting me? That is totally different. Okay. And then that's a really good example, by the way, thank you, Bob shine. If you hear this, because, uh, because that's just it's totally helpful for everyone. It's totally helpful. And you did awesome. You did totally awesome. So the sense is, uh, you know, from an ego's perspective is that I wouldn't like, if I'm over there doing wisdom dialogues, I show up and my host isn't even there yet. And not only that, the whole, the space is covered with all this shit. Right. And then not only that, but then he takes the telephone call and we can hear him in the distance on the phone during wisdom dialogues. <laughs> not once, but it's just a comical, a comical thing. It's a comical unfolding. It's a beautiful, am I coming back for wisdom dialogues? Probably not. That's not up to me. <laughs> I'm probably not coming back, but it's not, not for a second. Would I entertain a thought? Like I'm not being supported. Oh, I'm totally supported because of what this is for. Now, when you're writing music like that, that's a different story. I'm so you're writing music because you're totally supported. Look at the greatest artists. They did not give a shit about whether the art was going to support them. They did not care about that. See, it, it, it's, it's this sense, and it's so sweet too. I see the look on his face, all his innocence. It's so innocent, right? So innocent and sweet. And at the same time, this is the ego at play. He's totally conniving, right? This is the ego story. Look at how entitled this fucker is, right? Look at how, look at the entitlement here. I'm talking about the ego, not, not this person. He's, he's innocent. He's perfect. He's identifying with an ego and it, the ego's covering up the entitlement part. I deserve because of all the things that I've done to be supported in my work. How many times do you hear that shit? How many times do you hear that one? And then there's the ones who think they got su successful at being supported in their work. What are they doing? They're over there making money off people who want to be supported in their work. Okay. This is all a game. That's not the goal. The goal is actually not to be supported in your work. If that, if you think that's the goal, you don't know what your work is. Isn't that so fun? Isn't that so much fun? So this might be a little bit hard to take. I didn't make a comment on the four fuckers post, man. No way. Uh, I'm not going to make a comment and comment to him what the truth is in that moment. I could just feel that that wasn't the thing. I was not called for that at all. 
what I was called for, Christine, and you'll appreciate this. There he is, his face, his eyes. You'll look at him in a picture. And it's like, oh, you're okay. You're all right. You're doing awesome. Basically, everyone is. They're all doing awesome. They're all finding their way like that. It's us really holding them back to take it like something's wrong. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. I pray that they fucking get more awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, look at the prayer is always the, the same thing you're teaching. You're teaching your mind again, right? If he's not awesome, you're not awesome. I'm awesome, Hope Johnson. Everyone's awesome. <laughs> Lori, that's why I'm awesome, Hope, Hope Johnson, on uh, Instagram. You asked me that maybe like a year ago. That's the reason. Because everyone is awesome. At the time, I go, I don't know. It rhymes. <laughs> it just came to me. That's why I'm awesome, Hope Johnson. Because everyone in my view is fucking awesome. Um, Lynn McLean, my love, thank you for joining. How do you disidentify from a thought when it seems so real? Well, that's basically what I've been sharing a bunch of times, but I don't mind sharing it again because I know how quickly it just drops out of the awareness. I know it. And you know what? And I also know this every time I say it, it's totally different. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say at this very moment. Like, how do you disidentify with a thought? Okay. Look at the thought like this. Uh, the thought is like wind, okay? Think of it as wind, okay? Where, where does wind come from? Do you know where wind comes from? Anyone know where wind comes from? No, exactly. Just like, fuck, with there's some wind. <laughs> right? You might say, oh, it originated over there. But before that, where was it? You know, like, <laughs> there's some wind, okay? Think of the thought as some wind, okay? And think of your mind as basically uh, empty space. Okay, so when you take uh, when you, when you take this this ident on this identity as this I that needs to dis disidentify with thoughts, it's like you have made a kite and you put it in the wind of thought. Okay, now it's blowing all around. It's just getting fucked up. That's the I identity just getting all four back basically. Okay, so uh, so so in that case. All there is, is to recognize that the thought itself is, is meaningless. And that's what the process of, of Ramana is actually showing us that, or the process, it's an older process that he's bringing to us now. I mean, this really originated as, as, as far as I know with Ramana Maharshi, which who knows where he learned it, right? So it's like, it's like, this is, this is something that, that um, can definitely be very powerful. Um, although what I've seen is, when people are, you know, trying to deny that they have a choice, if they're trying to deny that they have a choice, that they can choose to do this, then it's going to be very difficult. Okay. Because like you can, you can choose to see a thought as, as meaningless. It, like that's something that you have to know that you can choose to see it as meaningless. And the reason is there's no real choice. It's just that you gave yourself, you gave yourself an ability to choose by choosing to make it meaningful. You gave yourself that ability. And in a world of polarities, an ability that you gave yourself also has an opposite usage, right? So now you can use that same ability that you gave yourself, you know, to perceive things in this way, to perceive things as if you're real, as if, if you're, you're, as if the image you made is real, you are real. Okay, that that's true. You are real, but the image you made is not real. Okay, and the thoughts apply to an image you made that's totally unreal. So it's your willingness to see in the moment. Now, if you forget all of that, which you probably will, okay, you could. If you forget all of that, all you have to do is, for instance, for instance, you you know, make up your own thing if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, perceive from the awareness behind your head through the imaginary eyes, paper mache head. Okay. That's one technique. Another technique is block therapy. Get on a block and breathe. Okay. There's, that's another technique. Another technique, pinch yourself. Feel what that feels like your attention going from 
mental energy to physical sensation changes things immensely. It's also a a physical sensation when you focus from the back of your head. It's also a physical sensation. That's what you're getting. You're getting a visceral sensation. I asked Akea right away. She got it right away when I told her, imagine, like she's laying on a bed, so she can't put her fist back there. I just go, imagine that you're looking through the back of your head. So she just imagined she was looking and she automatically she felt it. What does that feel like? Wow, it's a relief. See? And 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 really the relief is coming from you stop chasing thoughts. So whatever it takes, whatever modality works for you is great. You told me earlier it doesn't have roots to anything. Yes, that's right. That's right. So it's like you're it's like you're um make there it's like make believe roots in space it's like you just cut it there's nothing there's nothing there it's like the the you could you could look at it like this the roots are to your emotional energy your emotional charge that emotional charge that you have basically that's what's rooting it in your consciousness right now is that emotional charge that you have going so when you see that it has no basis in reality you lose the emotional charge to it And then in that, it's gone. It's meaningless. It's a meaningless thought. Always was. I love you, Gail. Thank you for the heart hands. Lynn, I hope that answered your question. And if not, let me know. I'm signing out here in just a few minutes. And um, if anyone has any questions or anything in closing, let me know. Um, I love having wisdom dialogues with you guys. Listen to the podcast too. um, If you like more wisdom dialogues, some of you like more. If you do, that's awesome. If you're feeling like um, you're going to, you're using this to stay in the spirit, to stay stay in the understanding of what's true, to stay close to God. I love it. Um, There's literally at least hundreds, if not thousands of hours online. I do about four hours of this every week. And I've been doing this since 2016, as far as recording it, maybe the podcast, I didn't start recording till later. I don't know, but I know there's a lot. Okay. Oh, you went on Splash Mountain for me, Akea. Thank you. I love that. We have so many memories going on Splash Mountain. I'm so glad, honey. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was a really young mom and she was only three years old and I was 23 when we were at Disney And I was like, fuck her. I'm at Disneyland for me. Like, I want to have fun at Disneyland, right? And if she wants to be with Disneyland with me, she's going to do the shit I like to do, okay? One of them is Splash Mountain. (laughs) So she was really tall for her age. They have a height thing. Normally, three-year-olds aren't getting on that ride because they're shorter than her. But she was like, like right now, she's pretty tall. She's like five, ten and a half or something like that. Um, and she was big for her age. So she went on there and she got so scared that last there's a one waterfall at the end. It's like, really, it's like, it's, it's, it's vertical. Yeah. So she got so scared on that. She didn't want to do that. And I go, well, I'm not going to be at Disneyland with you. If you're not doing that, that was the kind of mom I was, (laughs) oh, if you're not doing the rides, I like to be on, I'm not at Disneyland with you. So how about that? I'll go to Disneyland by myself. She was determined to get back to Disneyland. She's like, okay. It was not, I don't know how many months it was, but it was not long after that. I think she was still three. And she was like, I'll go on it, mommy. And she just got so used to it and loves it so much. She's such a Disney girl. <laughs> she, lo- she loves all the rides. <laughs> and we were, we were just, uh, we were such good um, Disney people because we would get there really early and run on all the rides and that we'd have so much fun. We'd be there till really late. She'd be falling asleep, like leaning on me, like falling asleep in line. Like we'd be on the, like the last line that you can get on for uh space mountain when space mountain used to be, I think way more awesome than it is right now. Uh, <laughs> but she'd be like falling asleep and it's just, uh, it's so fun. It's, it's so great that she's over there doing the thing. And, and, uh, and it's so fun that she, um, likes having a mom like me (laughs) then we went that one time high. oh yeah then when we were adults we went really really high they they ended up legalizing marijuana in uh in california 
and I was able to get a license and we went over to the dispensary and we did not realize how strong shit was. We were ridiculously high. We were not even trying to, mm -hmm. uh, we, we did not know we were eating a rice crispy or something. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It was intense. It was a little bit intense in Disneyland that high. <laughs> Ah, uh, Constance requesting Reiki for my lower back tailbone as I feel into the body sense of being uncomfortable. Thank you. You got it. And Carla's on here too. So, um, and, and is she's still, I don't know if she's still in her bath. That was a little while ago, but if you know, Carla, um, she's, she also loves to take all those requests and, you know, so do I, I love it. I mean, as soon as you just mentioned that stuff, I can sense that, uh, that low back of yours, just being empty space, you know, there's nothing there. There's nothing really to be in pain. You know, it's nothing but a, but a thought that, that you know, defiled your spirit somehow. And that it just, that, that could just be forgiven in an instant. So yeah. And I feel like, you know, the Re Reiki is like that. I really liked learning that process too, because it, and that's what I felt too. when I was sitting in front of Ramana, when he said he hopes that he'll see through the suffering in this lifetime, I really felt that like that was Reiki, you know, the same thing that Reiki is saying, you know, well, that it is, um, it doesn't really have that name, but that's just one name to call it where the, the, the energy just goes outward. It just goes outward. Like they're requesting a healing and the energy just goes out. And then the, the next thing, you know, I don't know what his process was because I wasn't involved in it one bit, um, except for the part where I'm in the lie detector and I talk about my own experience with it. Right. Um, uh, and then, but, but then later on, you know, he tells the group that it's only a choice. So it, to me, it seems like that suffering thing is done. Looks like that's done. So the same thing with the lower back and tailbone, it's like that lower back and tailbone, to me, those don't exist and it's not possible for them to be in pain, right? And it's, and, and that's really like, uh, that's really the way that we uh, will see all kinds of miraculous healings we just refuse to see that th that is actually a thing and that's really what reiki is too because it's tuning into the vibration of it and just allowing that to be transformed right and it's a, it's just a different way of saying it but it's all really the same exact thing uh Achaia suggests a radical awakening for constants all right. Well, Constance, if you want a radical awakening, I would most certainly love to um, practice that. Uh, in fact, my homework was to practice radical awakenings um, before we have another meeting with Ramana and kind of like do a recap. So um, I'm open to anyone who wants to do radical awakenings with me. And right now I'm going to go because I have a call and um, and uh, and that's to, to, to set us up for our our interview tomorrow with Sharon, Sharon Sirota. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining. I met Robert just recently. I don't know how you found my stuff on YouTube, but he was making some comments to me on YouTube and I was commenting back to him, which is fairly rare. I don't seem to get a lot of comments on YouTube, but there's somewhere that I get comments that I don't know about because there that guy at the front at Kalani goes, oh my God, I'm the one who's saying this stuff on your on your, on your, uh, on, I, th I think he said on your post. I was like on my post where, and he's like on your freaking post, come on like that. And, you know, I had somewhere to go anyways, but I was like, where are those comments? Like he's like, he, he's saying stuff like hope Johnson is so fucking awesome and all this stuff, which, you know, like there's nothing for me to really answer about that, but still I'm like, maybe people are making comments somewhere else and I don't know about it. So if that's the case, um, yeah, just get a hold of me somehow. I'm on Facebook. Um, Hope, I think it's Hope Akea. Hope Akea Johnson, I think it is on Facebook, or you could just look up Hope Johnson in Hawaii, um, Hope Johnson Wisdom Dialogues, hopejohnson.org. You can email me at hopejohnson at me.com. Yeah, there's, I'm easy to get a hold of. So if you have questions and, and I didn't answer, then um, that's why, because I'm probably posting to podcasts maybe and don't know that they're, they're there, you know, don't know that there's any questions there because I'm posting to a lot of different podcasts from one spot. Okay. 
Um, so I will be back again next Monday and I'm, I'm also going to be at, uh, on Friday and I guess Akea is going to be there. Actually, if anyone's coming from the Seaview area, um, for the next, whatever, or not Seaview, my bad, uh, that would be, uh, Cinderland area, Cinderland, because that's where she's going to be staying if anyone, but I'm guessing she'll be over here on Friday. She'll probably be here this coming Friday. Um, but if anyone wants to go to Wisdom Dialogues from the Cinderland area before Akea gets a car or go with Akea after she gets a car, um, Haya Farms Road, all people down there, she would love to ride with you. Um, yay, we're so excited. So until next time, you guys, I love you. Visit Miracle Botanicals because it's fucking awesome. Definitely look at my blog. I've been updating my blog all my blog covers are done now. I'm so excited about that. That means my blog does not look broken one bit. Okay. Now I'm going through every single product of mine and I'm uh, linking uh, where it has articles. I'm linking it to the new blog so that it doesn't break when the old blog is gone. So that's my current pro one of my current projects right now. Um, I also am coming up with a father's uh, father's day gift guide. I'm having a blast with that. It's coming along nice and slow. Also, I've been working on my book, The Big Book of Hope, also known as The Way to the Way, also known as Aphorisms for Awakening the Mind. Um, it's over 400 pages. I finished the last chapter last night. Um, and I also started to put it through Grammarly. Grammarly has over 200 more um, possible things that I need to fix as far as grammar, which I love going through it like that. It helps me make it really, in my mind, it seems to be really clear. Um, I don't know. I'll wait for the feedback from the other people, whether it lands for people, whether it works for people. It's a big, huge book. It's similar to the kinds of stuff I, I post on Facebook. In fact, sometimes I just take what I'm working on my book and I put it right on Facebook. So if you like that stuff, you're probably going to like this book. Um, and, and it's going to be done, um, really soon. I, I'm, it's going to go back to those, those original or the, the, um, peripheral, I guess, type parts of it, which I haven't done yet, which is like where you do some kind of forward, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm just going to finish all that part, send it off to the person who, um, wants to publish it for me. And, um, she's also, she also wants to be the editor on it. I'm going to send it off to her. And then she's probably going to inform me, okay, this is what you need to write. Or I'll just ask her, what else do I need to write while you're doing that? So who knows when it's coming, but I'm excited about that, you guys. Um, also, um, you can donate to me different ways. I take checks. Uh, you can just let me know if you want to send a check. I can send you my um, address. I take Zelle. I take um, Venmo. I use the stuff, I use the donations. I make it a point to use the donations toward wisdom dialogue stuff. And I just got a really decent size, do size donation. So that's why I'm going to get that heart math thing. For me, that's like part of wisdom dialogues. I'm just going to be using that on everyone all around me. So I'm so stoked for that. I know that thing costs hundreds of dollars. I don't know how much, but um, yeah. So if you guys um, want to donate to me, that's awesome. Um, on Venmo, no, not Venmo. Did I say Venmo? You're shaking your head at me. Not Venmo. Venmo and PayPal. I can't do those. It's actually Cash App. Yeah, I can't take any money on Venmo or pay PayPal anymore. Um, because I supposedly because I sell cannabis essential oil, and I won't back down from that because it's good medicine. Um, yeah, that's just the kind of broad I am. So, um, Cash App. I can use Cash App, and on Cash App, I'm Hope Johnson, the number seven. Also, um, you know, just coming around buying essential oils. That's awesome. It's a very small family business right now. It's only me and my husband. We have some people who were employees and are now more like subcontractors where they just do stuff on the side for us. Um, so you're definitely like, if you're coming over and you're shopping at Miracle Botan Botanicals, not only are you getting the most awesome essential oils I can find in the whole illusory fucking world, but that's also like directly supporting the Hope Johnson family, apparently in the illusion. Okay. Um, you don't have to, but I invite you to, and I love you so much. Mahalo, aloha, and a hooey ho. Yeah. Yes.